I like this new setup. It makes my day-to-day -day life a little bit easier. So that's what we're going to go with. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Deep Thoughts Thin Coats with me, Phil the Glacial Geek. Uh, today, I am uh, coming to you here from my office, as usual. Uh, I've got the new setup. This is I kind of did one of the this uh, previously, uh, the last one, and that was more because of uh, just the timing when I had some visitors. So uh, when they come, we would have to push the desk over this way. But now I think I want to try to keep it uh, just like this. I think it just makes my life a little bit easier, um, just in the general day to day. And I don't think it really affects the the visual, um, what it what it what it, the way it presents. And I think this is going to be a better setup for me. Uh, in general. So I'm going to go with it. I like it. This is the way it's going to be. So, uh, But today I'm going to be working on some more of my um, Sanguinary Guard. I've got these guys all primed up. So I did two different primings as you can see. Anywhere that was going to be gold or metallic I did a black primer uh, using the Imperial Primer and then I did a, a light gray primer using uh, Tester's uh, Model Master. I think it's Tester's. This model master, whatever this is, model master. I use their their uh, paint on primer. Seems to work well, does well. That way I don't have to worry about Rallican. It also gives me the ability to do something like this, like two tone primer, so I don't have to choose one or the other. So I like using this method since I'm gonna have the wings be all white, like I did on my previous guys, which I don't know if I ever showed the final products, but I'm pretty stoked with how they came, turned out. So they've got there, and I've got the wings. You know, white color, even though most of the model is the uh, the gold. So, yeah, pretty good. Hopefully, we'll keep going with these guys. So that's what I'm going to be working on <clears throat> uh, hobby-wise during the, uh, this, which actually kind of relates into the topic that we're going to be talking about today, which is uh, what role should painting play in Warhammer 40,000? So uh, there's there's a couple different ways to approach that question. Uh, some people, um, you know, some people don't like painting. Some people do like painting. Uh, some people like playing with painted models but don't like painting themselves, so they get higher out uh, commission painters. Some people like painting and not playing, so they become commission painters. All sorts of different levels of uh, activity within the hobby. And there's no, as I've talked about previously in other videos and other ways, there's no right way to do 40K. You know, there's your way, and that's the way that works for you, and that's perfectly fine. But that's the way it should be, is that you should be able to do this hobby and enjoy this hobby uh, in any manner that you see fit. But it's uh, hard to deny um, how important, in a general sense, that painting kind of plays in this hobby versus other things like board games and things like that where you can paint models from board games but it's not as big of a um a, a part of this uh and there's other aspects of ways to paint it and and things like that that we can get into but first i want to talk about whether or not i think painting should be required uh no i don't think so i don't think painting should be required i think that you should be able to uh, play the game however you want uh, i get for bigger tournaments uh having a three color minimum i think that's nice because just even a bare three color minimum that's it's almost like the minimum that i require to get onto my into the onto battle reports what it provides is it provides a base um level to allow you to have the suspension of disbelief to make it into uh something more than just like more than just a board game and i think this hobby especially when you play it is more than just a board game and i think it should be treated as more than just a board game um and the bare three color minimum i think allows you to elevate it to that point um, and allows you um, to 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 have that little suspension of disbelief. So if someone comes with their you know their their army that they've been working on for an entire year painting up and it looks gorgeous, to have them face off against <clears throat> bare plastic is a little unfair. You know, to have them face off against the bare three color minimum is fine. You know, it it, it I don't think uh, I think higher levels of painting can really elevate games can really elevate a situation. But I don't think that it um, really makes that big a difference once you get to any kind of painting standard uh, beyond three color minimum. I think once you get to three color minimum, things are fine and, and it works well with each other across the table, even if the other side of the table is 
like I said, a professionally painted army. So <clears throat> for bigger tournaments, I understand the three color minimum. I think it, uh, it, it basically just shows that you've, um, it, it's basically a courtesy at that point uh, for other players who put a lot of time and effort into their paint jobs. And I think that's a fair courtesy to give at that point. Um, I don't think that for smaller tournaments that you have to require painting, um, but bigger tournaments, these are these are tournaments that people have uh, been prepping for, have been have, have been trying to to build up for for a long time. And at a certain point, you kind of have to give some consideration to the fact that people have spent a long time getting these armies looking great, and they should they deserve to be able to place them uh, across the table from an army that at least has color on it. That's not just a whole bunch of gray plastic. Because honestly, gray plastic um, is is hard to to really get behind and understand and play uh, against. You know, uh, I think that a whole horde of gray plastic just looks the same, and it becomes at a, at a certain point it just kind of all blends together. Because even models that are painted a similar color, because you know you're following a certain um, uh, certain color scheme or whatever, even then there's still differentiations that you can see. Uh, it becomes easier to to differentiate different uh, models, different types of models, different weapon loadouts when there's any kind of paint on it whatsoever. Um, for some reason, gray plastic just kind of blends into the nothingness of uh, of everything. And it becomes very difficult to keep up with that and to see them, um, to see that kind of differentiation. I think the bare minimum, uh, keeping it there, when you can see the bare minimum of what, uh, the bare minimum of the three color allows that kind of separation and that's the, the 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 point at which things become more than just a mass honestly um so yeah i think in there it does become uh necessary i don't think that you should not play with plastic models especially if you're just playing a friendly game if you're just getting together with your friend um and you're 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 putting together a list and you're starting to get with a new army and you're just trying to get your head wrapped around how the army plays then absolutely, I think you should be able to play with your brand new toys. I absolutely love doing that. And most of the time I assemble my list, my armies, because I want to be able to try to get them out there. Although most of my games are battle reports, so they have to be painted for because of myself, uh, my own requirements at that point. <clears throat> but if I am trying to build up a list and I don't get it, like these guys, I've got a tournament coming up this weekend. If I don't get these guys finished, I'm still going to bring them because I want to be able to, to play them on the, on the field. So I've got no problem with that on smaller tournaments. Uh, bigger tournaments, I get having the three color minimum. It also provides like a certain level of uh, of um, visual interest uh, when you're putting yourself out there as a bigger tournament. Um, I like that. I like that that requirement. I think it it provides, like I said, a base level of um, effort that goes into it, and you know you have cool looking armies at that point, and you can have a really beautifully painted master masterful masterfully painted army. Uh, up against a three color minimum and they look they look fine together at that point um, so yeah that's kind of my thoughts on the requirements in tournaments for painting um, and I think that anything beyond there I think there should be uh, more of an emphasis on the hobby side of things to encourage people who enjoy the hobby more than necessarily becoming uh, the top generals I like the idea I don't necessarily think that you need to have um, uh, painting scores included into um, the, the 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 total tournament winners, but I do think that there should be painting competitions at all major tournaments and even at smaller tournaments. You know, to encourage that kind of um, uh, that kind of expression of the hobby. Because, like I said, there's some people who, you know, they're never going to be the top generals. This that's just just not how it works. That's not the armies they want to uh, collect. That's not the armies they want to play. But if you give them some other reason to come to the tournament, they, they'll come. You know what I mean? You give them a, a good, uh, if they're good at painting, if they're good at modeling, and they're good at uh, creating these visually stunning pieces, that all adds to the hobby. That all adds to everyone's enjoyment. And if you can encourage them to come to these tournaments, even if they're not going to win uh, best general, they could win best painted, you know, and then have a prize where, you know, th they have a minimum prize. So they, they win back their... Uh, their entry fee or something like that. So even if it's just a minor thing like that, so it doesn't cost them anything to come to these tournaments if they're really good at painting, they know that they can they can probably win on the painting things. And then it gives them an, an encouragement uh, to keep do, enjoying the hobby the way they enjoy it. And it allows other players uh, to see their work and, and it gets everyone together and, and encourages things. You know, like 
for instance, each time I come into a new uh, venue and I come to a new place, like when I started up doing battle reports in Anchorage or when I started coming down here in Savannah, um, the fact that I required painting to be on the battle reports uh, actually has increased the number of people who have painted armies because they want to be in battle reports, which is awesome. You know, I absolutely love that. And I think it, it increases um, uh, the, the, you know, just the level of visual enjoyment that you get uh, from a scene, the more armies that you see painted on there. So that, you know, there's a reason if someone wants to be on, the, on there with their brand new Eldar army, you know, as opposed to just leaving gray plastic or just primed, uh, which would be fine for a local tournament, suddenly now they want to be on the, in the battle report, so they painted it up. And now when they go to the local tournaments, they now have a painted army at the local tournaments, you know? And it, it just increases um, the enjoyment level of all of these situations. And I think that uh, that's something to be encouraged. Not necessarily something to be required, especially at, like I said, uh, smaller events. Um, but I think it is something that really could benefit the the hobby as a whole if it's something that's encouraged. And there's a reason for people to want to keep uh, pushing the envelope with their painting, pushing the envelope uh, with the way they they uh, with the work that they do. And uh, it's it's not hard to do. You know what I mean? You just have you take out, like I said, the you know however much it costs to to join the tournament. You have one payment's worth of prize go to best painted, and the rest can go all go to the top, you know, two or three or whatever you want to divide it. But if you have some kind of, um, if you have some kind of um, enticement for people to want to paint better, you're going to get better looking armies, and you're going to get better looking uh, events, just in general, the way they the way that works out like that. So yeah, that would be my suggestion. Is not a requirement for local but encouragement at local um, with painting competitions, like I said, um, and bare requirements in larger tournaments, uh, but as a courtesy to those players who really want to put in a lot of time and effort uh, into their army so that they're not just matched up against gray plastic. Um, so that's my thoughts on it. I don't think that there should be, um, I don't know if there should be, if, if soft scores like, Painting and modeling should be included in the overall, just because you know when you're competing in a game, you're you're competing in the game. You know I think that there should be that, but I think there should be secondary competitions, like I said, with the painting, um, and at bigger tournaments you can even have uh, bigger prizes. You can have first, second, and third. You know as opposed to just the one that you're going to probably get at a local tournament, um, and you can even have a ranking system based upon the painting so that. You know, those people who are really dedicated to the painting side of the hobby have a reason to keep coming back year after year because they can try to compete to do better against their, their their next rival in the painting department. You know, that's awesome. So in tournaments, that's kind of the way I feel it. Uh, there's other aspect of what role should it play in uh, distinguishing... Um, what role should it play in distinguishing units or distinguishing like regiments and chapters and things like that and there's a lot of people who get really caught up in the specific colors that armies should be in warhammer 40,000 um and i kind of disagree with that i really do um I, I guess that's not surprising coming from someone who has green raven wing <laughs> but uh the fact is that warhammer 40,000 isn't an historical miniatures game you know Historical miniature game, they, they, they spend a lot of time and effort um, making sure that their armies uh, look exactly the same color, same shape and design that they did in real life, you know? So you've got Napoleonic colors, you've got uh, World War II colors, whatever it is, they paint their, their models and their armies to look as close to reality as possible. In Warhammer 40,000, I mean, it hasn't happened. It's, you know, probably will not happen, so... In that point, there's no historical basis on which to base it on. You know, you have the armies that they've painted up for um, in uh, heavy metal and stuff like that. The GW has their official color schemes and stuff like that. But even those color schemes have changed over the years. I mean, Dark Angels, for instance, started out as black. That's why their their pre heresy colors are are black, and their you know now colors are are now colors. Their forty thousand colors are green. Is that it got changed. There was a there was a, a mix up in communication, uh, and they painted up some of their army as green, and they just kept going with it. You know, they went with it. Um, so at that point, if you had already started painting painting your Dark Angel army as black, 
and now all of a sudden the official color is green, you know, why should you be held responsible for that? You know what I mean? If you want to run your uh, your Dark Angels as their quote-unquote pre-heresy colors, run them as black. That sounds good. I, on the other hand, don't like painting black, which is why my Ravenwing are green. You know, and I but I get so many questions from people being very upset that I decided to go with green Ravenwing bikers. Like, the bikes are green, and that really seems to upset people. But I don't think that there's any there should be any expectations of requirement of colors. Because these are your... I know the, the flippant answer is always your models, you do what you want with them. But I really honestly think that that's the way it should be done. I think that people should be allowed to paint them however they want and call them whatever they want. So as long as they're clear about it and as long as there's no confusion. So as long as I'm not running my my you know my green Ravenwing bikers and I'm also calling uh, half of the green Ravenwing bikers Ravenwing and half the green Ravenwing bikers uh, white scars. As long as I'm not doing something like that to purposely confuse or or inadvertently confuse the situation, you should be fine, you know? But if I wanted to paint my white scars green, why should I not be allowed to? You know, why is there a problem with that? You know, and then you could talk about it saying it's a successor chapter, but during a tournament, there's no problem with them calling them white scars, you know? Or calling them, you know, if I wanted to have black bikes, but I didn't feel like doing dark angels, then why can't I have black bikes for my, uh, my white scars, you know? I just think that... The, the reality is is that they really are your models and the painting is part of uh, the expressive as uh, aspect of this of this um, this hobby and I think that you should be allowed to uh, paint them whatever color you want you want to paint up purple dark angels I've got a friend who did but he's calling them a successor chapter which is fine but you know what if he wants to then run an Azrael with that squad go ahead you know call them dark angels paint them purple I don't care, and I don't think anyone else should care. You know, the only person that it really matters to is is the person whose army it is. You know, and as long as they're clear about it, as long as they're upfront about it, I don't see any problem with that. I, for instance, at the end of 7th, ran my Green Wing as Ultramarines because I wanted to run the Skyhammer Annihilation Force. And it was never confusing. You know, I never ran Dark Angels tactical squads with... Um, quote-unquote green Ultramarines tactical squads. Anything that was... A regular marine on bike, or a regular, regular, regular marine on foot, was a, an ultramarine. There was never a confusion. Never any confusion with that. As long as you're upfront about it, as long as you talk about it with your opponent, and as long as you say something about it, there shouldn't be any problem. So if I don't like the Katachan, Katachan models, because, I don't know, it just doesn't appeal to me, then I think I should be able to just paint up some of the Cadian models and call them Katachans. You know, as long as I just run them like that. Now, if I have... The only time it becomes an issue is if you're trying to run different chapters or different regiments or whatever it is with the same paint scheme, then things get a bit confusing. And at that point, I think paint can be used uh, to differentiate between uh, different, um, different groups within your army. And they should be at that because I think that uh, running armies with multiple detachments with the same color... Uh, can get confusing and you can inadvertently um, you know make a mistake and whether or not you intend to it does it, that's an issue you know I don't think that you should uh, be doing anything that can lead to uh, easily lead to confusion so um, if I'm saying every single one of my marines is an ultramarine and I run them with the dark angels livery I'm not suddenly going to be trying to take uh, Grim Resolve because they're all Ultramarines. And I know that, you know that, everybody knows that. It becomes easy to just go with the rules that the, I want to do. But if I've got half my army painted green, half my army, or all my armies painted green, but half of them are Ultramarines and half of them are Dark Angels, suddenly now I'm left in a situation where I go, ooh, is that unit, was that one of my Dark Angels units? Is that one of my Ultramarines units? And anytime you're going to be left with that kind of confusion, anytime you're going to be left with that kind of uh, a situation where you have to make any kind of call and your opponent might have confusion at all, then um, you've created a situation that A, doesn't need to be, and that should just be easily fixed and should never have occurred. So if you want to run two different regiments, if you want to run two different uh, chapters, feel free, but just make sure that they're visually distinct so that you can run them. But they don't have to be, you know, if I want to run purple blood angels, good, go for it. I like running my red ones because I, I really wanted to paint some red. 
<laughs> but, you know, if I wanted to, I don't care. You know, if I've got different markings on them, I don't care. My Primaris, I all made up a whole separate set of markings for my Primaris Dark Angels that aren't in, you know, the Games Workshop canon. But it works for me because I like it. I like the way it looks. I think it looks visually interesting for me, and that's what matters. So the paint should be to appeal to you as the hobbyist, and that should be the primary importance. If you want to go beyond that and you want to start running different regiments, different chapters together, then you should use paint as a way to differentiate between them. So give them different helmet colors. Do something that makes them uh, visually distinct so that you don't have any kind of confusion. Uh, because if, you, if you're if you running the army and your opponent gets confused, that's your fault if you don't have them visually distinct. Even if you told him that all of, you know, that this half of the army was green, uh, this half of the army was ultramarines, this half of the army was dark angels, if your opponent gets confused and you had them in a confusing visual, there was no visual uh, distinction between the two, then that's your fault. That's not your opponent's fault. It doesn't matter how much you kept them on one half of the, of the, of the board and the other half of the board. Unless you have a way to visually differentiate between the two, then you're creating a situation that's going to cause confusion. And that's not right. That's not fair to, it's not fair to the game. That's not fair to your opponent at that point. Because... Uh, any kind of confusion like that takes away from, uh, and it also takes away from your ability to show your uh, skills as as a general. Because suddenly now there is a pall over whatever you do because there was that confusion. And whether or not it was intended, it happened. And if it happened because of you not painting your things differently, then that's a problem. You know, that's that's a problem. So paint them up however you want. Because it doesn't matter, and use whatever models that you want, as long as they're within reason. If it's a guy holding a las gun, he should be a guy holding a las gun. I don't think that a guy holding a las gun is a proper um, in in a tournament scene. You know, with your friends, you can do whatever the hell you want, really. But uh, I don't think that in a tournament scene, that a guy holding a las gun is a proper uh, replacement for a a bolter marine or a las cannon marine. You know, I don't think. Uh, I think that as long as it's um, similar size similar shape similar armament then you should be good to go and as long as they're painted i don't care how they're painted you know that in my opinion it still hasn't happened yet so who's to say that you didn't get it right and gw didn't get it wrong because <laughs> it hasn't happened it's not going to happen probably so we're not historical miniature makers you know we're not historical miniature painters and there's some people that really want to do that and that's fine if that's their thing they're allowed to do that you know they can paint them up however you know exactly they want but to kind of get mad at people for doing different things that's where i draw the line i think everyone should be allowed to paint up their armies however they want so if i really want to paint up green alteoc eldar and i can do it i don't have to call them samhain that's not the re that's not real there's nothing that says i should have to do that there's nothing in the rules that says it and i don't think even in the uh spirit of the game i don't think that there's any reason to have to require that so let people paint their armies however they want. Uh, have them visually, dis as long as they're visually distinct to allow, uh, as long as there's no confusion over things. So if they come up and I say, oh, these guys are, uh, you know, I have a whole bunch of Katachan painted up and I've run in them as Cadians. If I don't tell you I'm running them as Cadians, if I don't point that out, then yeah, that's on my fault again. Because I created a visually, um, I, I, I created a situation that could lead to confusion. So if you're going to paint things, differently if you're going to use different models the onus is on you to make sure your opponent doesn't get confused because it, it becomes very easy once you start to veer across from things what people expect um to make that kind of confusion so as long as you're as long as you're upfront about it as long as you're clear about it as long as you tell them there's there's no problem because visually as long as they're distinct from anything else that you could be running there's no reason that they have to look exactly like the heavy metal team does in the codex. That's entirely onto you because you're paying the money for the models. You're spending the time building the models. You're spending the time painting the models or you're spending the money to get the models painted. Either which way, they're your models and they should be painted however is going to make you happy. And as long as it doesn't cause any confusion during a game, there's no problem in my book with however they should be done. So... To get upset because someone decides to paint their Ravenwing bikes green because they like green better than painting black, it doesn't help anybody. And it doesn't do anything 
other than cause more strife in a situation that doesn't require it in the slightest. So that's kind of my thoughts on painting. I think that bigger tournaments benefit from having a painting requirement. I think that smaller tournaments benefit from not having a painting requirement because it allows more people to come. It, be, it becomes more uh, welcoming for newer players. It becomes more welcoming for up and coming players. So not requiring painting for smaller tournaments, I think is a good thing. I, I think it, uh, it helps because I think smaller tournaments uh, like your local gaming store tournaments should be about encouraging the community and encouraging uh, the community to get out and come together and, and, and enjoy this hobby together. I think that painting uh, competitions really enhance any kind of any kind of uh, tournament scene. So whether it's a giant tournament like an LVO or it's a, a 12 man uh, tournament at your local gaming store, whatever it might be, I think that painting uh, competitions really benefit because I think it, it encourages people to paint and painted models do look better. Plain and simple. There's no argument about whether or not they look better as great plastic or not. Any kind of paint job always makes an army look better. And visually on the tabletop, it should be encouraged. But like I said, smaller tournaments, I think should be about encouraging the, the community to come together, uh, to, to play together. And re having requirements for painting uh, keeps people from wanting to come. It should be encouraged, like I said, because I think it benefits the game as a whole, but it shouldn't be required just because it's it, that's a requirement that's going to push people away. So yeah that's my my thoughts on that is that during tournaments it should be bigger tournaments required just because it should be a, a courtesy to the players who have spent a lot of time and effort to make theirs look awesome they deserve to be able to play across from an army that's at least three color minimum painted um so if you're not into painting if that's not your thing you're just here to play the game that's fine but you should at least be able to put three colors onto it three colors with a base that's it doesn't take a lot to do that just paint the base you know, paint the army, put a wash on it, maybe do a single highlight, and you're good. You now have a three-color minimum army, and when it sits across from an army that, that someone spent an entire year painting, you know, yours isn't going to look as good, but it's going to look at least... that You've at least shown a courtesy to that player who spent a lot of time painting their army at this big event that they spend a lot of money to come to for the painting. Honestly, a lot of those guys come to those tournaments to get out their painting and show off their armies that they look awesome with. Which is great, which is why you just, there should be that kind of courtesy that you come to a tournament with a minimum painted army. Smaller, like I said, encourage people to come, don't have painting requirements, but have painting to uh, competitions so that you can encourage people to paint, encourage people to bring better and uh, better paint jobs, to inc increase their painting skills, increase their modeling skills, uh, whatever it is. Encouraging that aspect of the hobby is a good thing. Um, but when it comes to your own personal army, I don't think there should be any requirements on how they're painted. I don't think there should be any requirements on how they should look as long as they are visually distinct and as long as they are um, proper representations. So, like I said, Cadians are proper, um, are okay proxies for Catachans if you don't like the shirtless Rambo dudes running across your table. You know, I think that uh, if I wanted to run, for instance, if I wanted to run these guys with their wings as assault marines, because I like the wings the way that it looks, I think it'd be cool with a Dark Angels army to have the wings, then go ahead and do it. As long as it's distinct, as long as I, I say these guys are assault marines, because they're, they're a proper proxy, they're the same size, they've got jump packs, as long as they've got the right armaments, why not? You know, at that point, I don't think that anyone else should be uh, dictating to another player how they build and paint their army. As long as there's no confusion that can happen during a game, there's no reason to, to get upset about it. So my bikes being green and my Ravenwing doesn't upset the system. You know, it doesn't create any confusion. There's no wondering about, oh, I wonder if I said I'm running Dark Angels and all of my bikes are green, there's no confusion, you know. Therefore, I don't think there should be any problem. You know, if someone doesn't, if someone wants to run Blood Angels because they really like the way they play, but they don't like the red, and they prefer to have a purple army, or they prefer to have a, um, I don't know, like a, a yellow army, they can do it as long as they say that right off the bat. You know, 
Come at me with a blue painted Blood Angels army, and I will play you with a blue painted uh, with a blue painted Blood Angels army. As long as you said all of these guys are Blood Angels, I'm running Blood Angels tactics and Blood Angels rules, and they've got all the armaments that are allowed in the Blood Angels codex. We're good to go. We're good to go. But if you come at me with an entirely blue painted army, and you say half of these guys are Blood Angels, half of these guys are Ultramarines, I might have a bit of an issue. That's because at that point, you're, there's no visual distinction between the two separate groups. And at that point, there can be confusion. And if there's confusion because of the way you've done things, then that's on you. That's on you. So uh, you need to make sure that if you're going to be running multiple detachments, multiple um, armies from different lists, from different codexes, from different chapters, whatever it might be, that they're visually distinct. Not just that you know which army, which units are and aren't. There should be some kind of visual distinction to allow your opponent to keep track of it without having to know exactly what each unit is. Because a lot of times you run into people who have not played against a different, a certain type of army. So if someone hasn't played against um, Space Marines and they don't know what the different, the, the difference between a Devastator squad and a Tactical squad then they shouldn't have to try to keep track of all of that during the game. There should be a way to visually distinguish it. So if all of your Devastators are Ultramarines and all of your Tactical Marines are Blood Angels, they should be different so that when your opponent sees the, the purple units, they know those are Blood Angels and they know that the, that the yellow units are Ultramarines. That's fine, you know, because at that point there's two different colors, very visually distinct, and there's no confusion. And that's what it becomes important is that they... Um, is that you reduce and prevent the kind of confusion that can really, um, that's what matters. As long as you can prevent the confusion, that's the only time when painting becomes an issue. So if everything's painted the same color and they're all being run as the same army, I don't care what color it is, that's on you. That's whatever you want to do with your army to make them look cool in your mind. Because on the game board, as long as you tell me what they are and what rules they're using, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. So, that's my thought on the role that I think painting should play in this. I don't think it should be required. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't have a problem playing against the gray plas the gray hordes. Uh, my battle reports. I make them do painted just because I'm creating a a piece of entertainment for other people, not necessarily because of my requirements to play you. Uh, but it is because if I'm going to ask someone to sit there and watch my battle reports, I need to present a visually interesting situation and I think Barry at least painted makes a big difference um, but I don't think that it should be required in general for the hobby if that's not your thing you know if you don't like painting you shouldn't have to be able to paint because there is a game aspect to this hobby as well and if you only like painting then there should be a reason for you to want to come to some of these bigger events like an LVO or something like that and to, to compete in the painting things and I know there's a lot of people who do go to these these competitions purely for the painting so that's my thought. Uh, I think that all aspects of the hobby should be uh, encouraged. I think all aspects of the hobby should be supported and I think it should be applauded. So, you know, if you're going to a big tournament, give the common courtesy to, to give a bare minimum of paint job so that someone who spent a lot of time and effort on their army has something to play against. And I think that if you are uh, going to be playing an army, have the, the common courtesy to provide a visual distinction between two different sets of your army. So that I know the difference. I know which ones, which of your units are running as Cadians and which one of their units Catachan, Catachan, or which ones are running as Ultramarines, which ones are running as Blood Angels, you know, or Alteoc versus Sam Hain. I don't care if they're painted exactly as GW says it, but there should be a visual distinction between the two so that I, as a player, have an easy way to distinguish them. So that's my thoughts. Um, I love, I you know, I love painting. I love painted. I should say I love painted models. <laughs> painting can sometimes be a drudge, especially if you're painting like large hordes of guys. But being able to end up with a beautifully painted army is worth it to me. But to some people, it's not, and I don't. That doesn't make me a better person. Doesn't make me a better player. Doesn't make me a better anything. It just means that I'm different than that person. You know, everyone can enjoy these things however they want because that's what this is. It's a hobby, and it's meant to be bringing you enjoyment. And if it's not bringing you enjoyment, there's something wrong. And that needs to be uh, corrected. So, those are my thoughts. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, what do you think about painting? Should they? Should everything? Should we treat 40k 
as a, a, a historical miniature game where everything's painted to the exact specifications that uh, the GW overlords have determined? Or should people be allowed a little bit more uh, freedom and expression with their painting since there's no actual historical record of 40K since it's 38,000 years in the future? <laughs> Um, or do you think that uh, painting should be required in every single game, even if you're going to your friend's basement, that it should be required? You know, is that, a, you know, would you refuse to play your friend if he wanted to play with his brand new model that he got that he hasn't had a chance to paint up yet? Or are you the kind of guy who's like, I don't care, just play me with whatever you want, you know? I err on the side of you play me with whatever you want as long as it's not causing confusion. I'm game, you know, and that, that in, in my mind, that's what works for me. If that's not what works for you, that's up to you. But I think that um, there should be a distinction between larger tournaments where you're trying to encourage more of a, uh, a higher level uh, uh, than you would with uh, smaller local tournaments. I think the role of local tournaments should be to encourage uh, community, encourage people to get together and play the games. Uh, and in which case, I think sometimes painting requirements can be uh, a, a barrier to keep prevent people from rising up. You know what I mean? There's always going to be a ton of people coming to LVO, no matter what kind of requirements you place on your armies. Uh, so I think at that point, you kind of show a common courtesy to a lot of people that have been spent a lot of money and time and effort to make and get their armies there to look good, that at least you've got a painted army over there. So that's my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching. I really appreciate all the support that I get with this. Um, and I'm really glad that you guys have uh, seemed to enjoy it. So, I hope you guys have all enjoyed it. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek, as always. And until next time, have fun.